Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate podcast or live stream or whatever the heck we want to call it. And once again, my neighbors having some work done. So you hear in the background, beep, beep, beep. And I got rid of that stinking microphone I had the other day. I mean, it worked good. It was okay. It was uh, the reason I got it. It was dynamic. So it would only focus on sound like right here and eliminate any out no outside noise. But it uh, was technically a little bit of a challenge. Oh, the heck with it. Send it back to Amazon. But welcome. We're going to cover all kinds of topics today, uh, including what is the percentage of cash buyers right now and where do we rank in the country? And we're actually in the top five. Um, that's not great news. Our inventory today is 7,413 units. And that's Pretty much standard. That's where we've been. We have 4,036 come on the market the past seven days with 3,741 going to contract. Still about 100 higher than what we were seeing a little bit. So the gap is closed to a little less than 300 homes. You know, remember just the other day that gap was like 574. So I did get a request uh, to ask me kind of where prices were the past three months and the three months prior to that. I hope that's kind of what. It, what we were getting, and this is where we are. So you can see that this is where things just absolutely went bonkers. We stalled a little bit in July to August, and then it flew right straight to the stratosphere once again. Um, I like to track inventory, and the reason I do is that it just kind of tells us where where we're going to be. And uh, and I like there's a gentleman here. He's got a uh, newsletter that I that I look at and. Housing inventory will tell the tale. Now, I think this mirrors what you've heard me say quite a bit. It said, we are being flooded with housing prices. Will house prices decline or will price growth just slow? Does the U.S. have a housing shortage? If mortgage rates rise to 4%, will that halt the housing market? As Ivy Zellman said on NBC, CNBC. This gentleman says, although my crystal ball is cloudy at this point, I believe inventory will tell the tale. I truly believe that. That's why I watch inventory closely, not just the monthly existing home sales report from the National Association of Realtors, NAR, and that lags. That doesn't, you know, we get a monthly report, but it's, it's about two months old. And the monthly new home sales report from the Census Bureau, I also use weekly data from Altos Research. See Altos Mike Simon's weekly presentation on YouTube. I put that in the, the body below in this uh, in this uh, video, so you can watch. This guy has uh, talks na on a national level about inventory and where it's at, and it's worth looking at. So I put that link below. And this gentleman says, I track inventory sales for 30 plus local markets each month. My spidey senses are tingling. However, it isn't obvious why this time. In other words, he's a little nervous. But I believe one thing is certain inventory will tell the tale. That's what I've been. I don't want to say preaching, but certainly discussing a lot that, uh, you know, if the market changes, inventory will tell the tale. It's going to tell us where we're at. There are some price predictions that have come out. This is that time of year. It's kind of uh, one of those Christmas gifts that just keeps on giving, and it's the wonderful month of forecasting. So why not? The Mortgage Banker Association uh, says home prices to drop by late 2022. Well, let's take a look at what they're saying. They're saying in the first quarter, we're going to be up medium prices. It's going to be uh, up 15.3, new homes 7.7. .7. Now, remember, this is national data. Then it's going to slow to a crawl and only be up 1.4% by the second quarter, drop to 0 0.3, and then drop 2.5% by the end of the quarter. And then look at this. It kind of starts coming back up. Uh, they're saying by Q3 2023 and Q4 would be up 3.1. I don't know how anybody can predict out that far, but kudos to them. So you know what I did next, right? I went back and said, well, what did they say about this year? How close were they? Here's what they said. Given the low interest rates are driving demand, housing inventory has become a rising concern. This was October 2020. MBA Associate Vice President of Industry Analysis, Joe Carl, explained that current inventory rests at just a three-month supply. We're less than a month, okay? He said, as builders work to replenish the supply with new homes, the most recent census data shows a 1.1 million annualized pace for new construction, the highest since 2007. 
So what they say at the end of all this, that prices will increase to about 4 or 5%, a trend that will continue in the year ahead. We're up 30. So they're saying we're going to be down by 2.5% next quarter. Um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. So Zillow, in the news again, sells 2,000 homes to one company across the country, and they're going to turn them into rentals. So they're here. You know, they don't want to do them one or two at a time. They're just going to just 2,000 homes. You can have them. Um, I wish they weren't turning them into rentals. That's disturbing to me. Housing markets. Here we are. This is cash. Housing markets with the largest surge in cash sales. Where are we? We are down here. One, two, three. Tucson's number three. Las Vegas, number four. Phoenix, number five. And we are sitting at 17.4% of all the cash sales are investors. But look at this. We're out over 40% of our homes. 43% are cash. Where's all this cash coming from? With 17% of them being investors. So a lot of cash out there. And they are just gobbling up our homes like there's no tomorrow. And it makes it very hard for buyers to compete with cash. There are some loan programs out there that I'm looking into that uh, they actually come in and kind of buy your home uh, from you. And you can go out and write a cash offer and then they redraw the note. Kind of complicated. So I'll uh, be putting something out on that before I uh, stick my neck out here. But um, I think that's interesting. One other thing to look at here is ADUs. What's an ADU? It's an accessory dwelling unit. In other words, uh, used to call them mother-in-law suites. Uh, sometimes they're just made into offices now. They're getting very popular. Uh, people are adding another unit onto their property, and they can add 35% to the home's value. Accessory dwelling units, known as granny flats and in-law suites or garage apartments, have been on the rise since the pandemic. ADUs are growing at a rate of 9% or 100000 per year, according to a new analysis by Porch.com, a home improvement site. Do they add value? And in Phoenix, it says yes. It says here, home prices listings of ADUs compared to the average home price in Phoenix, it's going to be 149% above the average home price. So stick in that little uh, remodeled garage or a little shed in the back that can be used as an office or a mother-in-law suite, is, uh, it pays back. In fact, it pays better than remodeling your kitchen. So that's a very interesting uh, thing to look at. Now, there are certain neighborhoods where you're not allowed to do that. Uh, I know in Phoenix, it's really hard to get a permit to add a guest house. But if there's already an existing guest house on it, you can remodel it. But uh, they don't want you to add a guest house if there isn't one there. It has something to do with... I think just density and water usage, I don't know. That's way out of my pay grade. But uh, make sure you check with your local authorities to make sure that you can do that if you are considering adding an ADU in a house near you. Uh, I want to let everybody know, too, next week on the 16th, going to be interviewing Sam DeGreen again with uh, DeGreen Wealth Management. We're going to have a lot to talk about. We're going to dive into inflation and what it means and what we're seeing on a global scale. Uh, they've been a little busy. I haven't been able to bring them back because they moved to a new office. And uh, so it's going to be fun. That guy's always a hoot. I really enjoy uh, interviewing him. He's, I want to know how many more guitars he's bought. I think he said he had something like 30 or 40 last time I talked to him. So looking forward to that interview with Sam. And uh, that's about it for today. I will see everybody tomorrow. Tomorrow, what are we talking about tomorrow? Um, I had it right here, and it just went away. So you're just going to have to tune in tomorrow. But don't leave until you smash that like button. Thanks, everybody.